everyone, my name is Rebecca Day and I am a Marketing Senior at SEGA. I just want to welcome you all to our very first Visitor Sector webinar. Thanks for joining us on Zoom today. Over the coming months, we are looking to run more webinars as part of this series to support our visitor sector during this challenging time. It's great to see that many of you have already registered for some of those upcoming sessions. And if you haven't, um, it'd be great if you could check them out after this. The reason we are running these sessions is to make sure that as our visitor sector businesses, that you all have the support and information you need to understand how to successfully and practically plan for the next stages as we move from response and into recovery. With our current environment in mind, our topic today on digital best practice couldn't be more relevant. Many of you will have digital channels and may be asking, how do you utilize these during this time to keep your audience engaged and your businesses front of mind? And to ensure that when travel restrictions are reduced, that your bookings um, are coming through your door. To take us through this topic, I am very pleased to welcome Alex Dykeman, Head of Strategy at Maverick Digital, an Auckland-based agency which Alex founded in 2014. The agency um, specialises in digital tourism marketing and have used their in-depth knowledge of the sector to support both operators and RTOs throughout the South Pacific. Um, after Alex presents, there will be a Q&A um, and this will be facilitated by Angela Scott from Cloud12, um, who has been supporting CEDA with developing this series of webinars. I'd encourage you to ask questions and just make the most of having Alex here today um, and using her insights to get those answers that you're really needing. I'd now like to just hand over to Alex as she takes us through how to use digital to create demand and drive bookings from the new Kiwi Traveller. Thanks, Alex. Oh, thanks for that awesome um, intro, Rebecca. I'm really, really excited to be able to present to, to you all today. Um, let's just kick this off with, um, with a couple of questions, just a bit of an icebreaker. Um, um, everyone here, who has checked Facebook since they got up this morning? Be honest, it's okay. I totally have, multiple times. <laughs> cool, lots of us. Awesome. Um, and who has searched something, like anything, on Google um, since they um, got out of bed this morning? Yeah, yeah, cool. So digital is um, clearly a massive part of our um, everyday lives. I think a lot more than we realize a lot of the time, um, which is also why it's such an awesome tool to, um, to help us cope um, and recover as an industry over the next, um, the next little while. So I'm going to um, open up my slides and just share my screen. Okay, cool. Um, there's no doubt about it, the, the global uh, pandemic has changed the face of the tourism industry, um, perhaps irrevocably. So for the first time in our lifetimes, um, our borders are shut, international travel is totally out of the picture, um, and our country is emerging from one of the world's most um, stringent lockdowns. After spending a couple of weeks kind of mourning all of these things, um, it became pretty clear to me that all is definitely not lost. Um, and perhaps there's some really cool opportunities that are gonna come out of this for our industry. Um, the one I'm personally most excited about in the short to medium term is how we're gonna go about inspiring more Kiwis to explore their own backyard. Um, because let's face it, they haven't really got any other um, options for holidays over the next six months or so. Um, and, and trying to figure out how we're going to make the most of that renewed passion um, from New Zealanders for New Zealand um, is, is where your digital footprint is really going to come into its own. Um, so let's look at our tourism crystal ball, so to speak. Um, in the short term, we're looking at um, level two, which will hopefully come through in, in mid to May, May, late May. Um, level two will be all about the day tripper, um, as interregional travel is, um, is still discouraged at level two. Um, but Kiwis are going to be chomping at the bit to take a Sunday drive to a brewery, um, kayak down a river, or hike in a beautiful gorge uh, for the day. Now, level one, when it does arrive, um, will resemble relatively normal life, except with closed borders. So from what we understand, domestic travel will not be discouraged when we reach level one status. Um, I'm crossing my fingers and toes that we get there before the July school holidays so that 
um, family travel can be on the cards for, for many tourism operators. Um, but we do believe that level one should definitely happen uh, before spring. Um, longer term, the introduction of the Aussie bubble um, will mean we're able to extend marketing efforts across the Tasman. Um, those Aussies have sort of never been so appealing to us right now. Um, and then in time, in the longer term, um, we'll be back to, to internationals um, and our normal tourism mix. Um, so let's crack into it and uh, understand the domestic traveller opportunity for the Manawatu and um, then we'll move into leveraging um, the way we're going to leverage digital to, to make the most of it. So here's a little bit of data on um, the domestic traveller um, for the Manawatu region um, from MB and the graphics are from Lincoln University. Um, this represents the percentage of regional tourism um, income as, as domestic spend um, to the 1st of April 2020. Um, so right now, with our borders closed and with international travel pausing for the foreseeable future, uh, the Manawatu region is one of the best places in New Zealand um, to be in tourism, which is really awesome because as you can see, um, Queenstown, the West Coast and Auckland um, are going to, to struggle a lot um, with the switch over the next little while. Um, in the Manawatu, for you guys, um, more than $4 in every $5 of tourism spend um, in your region was from Kiwi travellers uh, pre-COVID-19. Um, while it remains to be seen how much discretionary income Kiwis um, will have um, once this is over and once the lockdowns kind of go down through the levels, um, it, it is pretty cool that um, the Manawatu is one of the best possible places to make the most of this new domestic traveller um, when they are allowed to begin travelling and holiday again, holidaying again. It won't be that much of a pivot to what um, the region is, is usually used to. Let's take a look at who um, the Manawatu's key domestic markets are. Um, I found these stats um, in the CEDA uh, section, of the CEDA stats section of the website, um, and they were taken to year end May 2019. Um, so they may have changed just slightly. Um, your Manawatu Whanganui locals uh, make up a massive chunk of your domestic income. Um, and this is followed by Wellington, which is um, a great region to target for the uh, drive zone weekend away proposition. Um, Auckland, the Hawke's Bay and the Waikato are also in your, in your top five. So it's worth thinking about um, who these regions are as you go into digital campaign planning um, through the levels later in this um, webinar as well. Um, internationally, Aussie is, is your biggest um, market by far, followed by um, the US and China relatively far behind, which bodes really well for um, the eventual arrival of the Anzac bubble. Um, so you guys are in a, a relatively good place. Um, so let's talk about um, what the new domestic traveller is likely to look like. Um, we'll split them into two kind of very broad categories and demographics um, to help you plan the types of products um, and offerings that um, might suit these guys the best. Um, your budget conscious domestic traveller is likely to be a family or a professional couple. Um, they're really feeling the effects of the pandemic financially um, and they are a bit wary of New Zealand's tourism reputation as being pretty expensive. Um, they got, these guys are looking for really good bang for buck. Um, because their disposable income is, is pretty uncertain at the moment. Um, the budget conscious domestic traveller um, could also become our domestic version of the VFR traveller in the future as, as well, um, in the sense that their main motivation for tourism um, may be around uh, catching up with loved ones they haven't seen in a wee while. Um, these guys are going to respond really well to um, discounted or value-driven price points um, and packages that um, really obviously offer good, good value for money. Um, so when they weigh up that, that spend, um, it, it comes out on top and they, they want to book, book the trip. Um, the, on, the, on the flip side of the coin, we've got these guys um, who are generally older couples and um, the kids have likely flown the nest. Um, they're semi-retired or completely retired and they're really used to um, bucket list international trips every year. 
they may have been disappointed um, that their trip to Europe this, this winter, European summer, was cancelled or um, frustrated they've had to um, move the, the trip of a lifetime to, to the Amazon jungle um, until, until next year. Um, as such, these guys are pretty used to getting away from home, um, and they've also got a fair bit of disposable income. Um, they're not likely to have been overly affected by the financial fallout of the pandemic, um, so they're still kind of um, pretty, pretty keen to spend. Um, they're also likely to take the place of our, inter of our higher value um, international travellers. Um, they'll be attracted to more luxurious accommodation offerings. Um, they won't be put off by expensive price tags. Um, and they may travel in a couple or um, in a small group of friends. So, so two very different uh, demographics there we expect to see emerge um, as, as our normal domestic traveller. Um, so the types of experiences that these guys will be most into um, the key thing on um, on everyone's lips, if they are a budget the budget conscious traveller, is um, can I afford it, and is it is it really good value? Is it going to be worth um, me forking out money right now? Um, the price needs to be seen to offer um, awesome value. Um, they're going to be really weighing things up when they decide um, to take trips over the next little while. Um, as mentioned, these guys are likely to be the new the new VFR traveller. Um, both, both types of demographics are likely to be craving a break away from um, the kind of stress and rigidity of lockdown. Um, as such, some really cool, fun and unique activities um, might be high on the list. Um, anything outdoors probably seen as pretty appealing right now. Um, people might be a little bit cautious still of um, indoors and indoor crowded spaces. Um, the, the Consumer Insights Agency, TRA, they're based up in Auckland, um, they recently talked about how backing Kiwi is going to be a, a real key motivator for purchasing decisions post-lockdown. Um, supporting, um, supporting fellow Kiwis is going to be um, a massive motivator for how we choose to spend our money. Um, a good example of this is the, um, the recent boycotting of Uber Eats this week. Um, who take a 30% plus cut from the restaurants they're delivering from. Um, all that money obviously goes out offshore, so there's been um, quite a cool grassroots movement um, against using Uber Eats and directly supporting our Kiwi hospital operators at this time. And I think we'll see that kind of sentiment flowing over um, into tourism as our sector opens up as well. Um, Within your messaging, it's worth considering how you can um, push or leverage that New Zealand owner-operator angle really strongly to make the most of this. Um, I think that it will appeal to a lot of domestic um, travellers if you take that angle in your marketing. I just want to um, make a quick note on what um, we call, we're calling the growth of the, the cautious traveller. Okay, so this is the type of guest that we're all going to need to kind of adjust our thinking around and adjust our marketing comms around, around um, probably for at least the next six months. Um, they're likely to have cancelled overseas winter trips um, for this year and they've likely lost a bit of money as a result. Um, they're a bit scared of booking and travel and not being able to go due to a sudden change in the levels or um, a personal um, issue or or whatnot. They're scared they won't get their money back or they're scared they're going to have to pay a big um, cancellation fee. They're also a bit wary of the virus itself. Um, so cleanliness and safety of, um, of themselves and the staff of the businesses they choose to purchase with um, are going to be a key part of any decisions that these guys these guys make. Um, so we need to keep them kind of front and foremost with a lot of our, a lot of our digital marketing work once we get there. Um, your cancellation policy um, is more important than ever. Um, we need to um, think about how we're communicating it. So a lot of the websites that we've built over the last few years um, have the cancellation policy kind of buried in the footer or um, under a few clicks um, from different pages. It's definitely not front and centre. Um, we need to, um, to kind of flip this on its head now um, and your cancellation policy should be really easy to find on your homepage or from your homepage as it is a really big part of, um, of the decision making process. If they can't find it, um, you run the risk of them not reaching out to you and just looking somewhere else where they can find it clearly. Um, 
Think about also how you're communicating um, those safety messages at the moment as well. We've seen a lot of operators doing some incredible work around um, health and safety prep for guests and staff heading into level two, um, but they haven't kind of thought about communicating that a lot within their, um, their comms or their marketing. Um, so, so do make sure you're talking about it and do make sure you're serving it up really high in that um, user experience on, on your website or within any um, social posts or advertising that you're doing. Um, just make sure you're being really dynamic with, with these types of messages as well. Um, perceptions are changing constantly um, and your website content um, needs to reflect um, the kind of current updates or mood of the nation, so to speak. And that's why digital is so cool is because it is so dynamic and because you can change things relatively, um, relatively easy compared to other, um, other comms platforms. Um, before we get into uh, kind of um, leveraging digital within the space, let's just talk quickly about um, learning from the global financial crisis in 2008, which is kind of our most recent relative event um, to what's going on right now, even though they're very different beasts. Um, we looked back to um, how brands survived um, during the GFC, and we found some really cool research on advertising and marketing um, from during this time. So the brands that continue to be visible and maintain some sort of a share of voice um, during the GFC recovered a lot faster than those that paused the bulk of comms entirely. Um, this kind of shows that going dark so to speak, is really, really expensive. Um, and maintaining your share of voice right now is not as hard or as costly as you might think. Um, the noise level in tourism um, has dropped substantially over the last few weeks, which is kind of to be expected. So we're seeing a lot less tourism content out there in the advertising space um, and in social and on various media platforms. Um, don't be afraid to stay top of mind with regular um, and consistent social media posts at the moment, um, or to send kind of regular emails out to your guest database, um, you know, promoting gift vouchers for Mother's Day or asking them to, um, to review you if they haven't done so yet on TripAdvisor. It's worth um, noting that maintaining or increasing your share of voice at the moment um, typically leads to an increase in share of market post pandemic. Um, so that argument to stay kind of visible and active in that digital marketing and comms space um, has never really been stronger. So I'm just gonna talk quickly about um, reading the room, um, which should affect um, the way that we are communicating with the domestic traveler over the next kind of six to 12 months. Um, this is it's kind of seen as a, um, a part of marketing theory, so I apologize if you've already um, thought about it or, or looked at it. Um, I like this analogy that when you um, think about walking into, into a church, right? And this church is incredibly sacred to all the people um, who are inside the church. And when you talk in this church, the words that come out of your mouth are going to be seen um, in the context of that church, so in the context of that sacred space. This is exactly what COVID-19 has done to us um, domestically and as a global community. We're all experiencing this as a collective. So anything you talk about or post or advertise or advertise is seen within the context of the pandemic. Um, and this is likely to go on for kind of at least another six months at minimum, we believe. Um, we're seeing kind of tourism in general be a little bit cautious of reading the room right um, and be a little bit scared of putting um, too much comms messaging out there um, right now kind of in, in fear of not doing it the right way. So the following is going to be all about kind of trying to give you the confidence to, to read the room based on the on the levels that we're going through um, and then adjust your digital marketing to, to suit. Let's have a look at how these domestic travellers are um, researching and planning. Basically, front of mind is first. So um, companies that people have been interacting with or engaging with over lockdown are gonna be at an early advantage, sorry. Um, as consumers, when we delve into researching a purchase or researching a, um, a holiday, um, we tend to think of the brands or the offerings that are front of mind um, before delving deeper to research others. So achieving that front of mind status is kind of your first hurdle. 
Um, and how do you go about doing this right now? Well, um, staying on top of your organic social media throughout lockdown and throughout level three and ongoing as we, as we move through the levels um, is absolutely key. Just um, do it in a way where you're reading the room. Um, stay close to previous domestic guests via email newsletters as well. Um, is, a, is a good way to do this. Um, do make sure that you're adding value with any email comms that you're sending out to previous guests. Um, I, you know, the, the, the funny emails I've had from a company who have bought a blender off or bought a pair of boots off um, a year ago has been felt really, um, really, really wrong and, and really off balance. So, so just make sure that you're adding, adding value they don't really want a COVID update. Um, they're going to want ideas on maybe family-friendly day trips to take once we get to level two, that kind of content. Um, if you do have a little bit of money put aside for marketing right now, you could consider a small Google display campaign to your kind of day trip audiences in preparation for level two, um, or a small YouTube campaign where short video ads show to people who are researching related searches um, based on your offering or based on a holiday um, to the Manawatu. two. Um, it's worth um, considering that staying front of mind doesn't have to be really expensive. It's just all about um, getting in front of your audience with an, with an engaging message um, as much as you can, essentially. Uh, when they do jump on Google, domestic audiences are likely to, um, to be searching for local activities, um, around um, where they live or um, just in the regions next to them initially. Um, so it's worth thinking about how, um, how well your website ranks organically. So that's to do with Google SEO. Um, say you're kind of a, um, a mid to high end luxury lodge um, based, based near Palmerston North. Um, if I search something like, you know, romantic accommodation Palmerston North in Google, um, where does your website show? Um, is it on the first page or is it on page page four? Um, organic traffic is, is gold because you don't pay for it. Um, so making sure that your website is indexing well, um, SEO wise is, is a really smart thing to be doing right now. I'll talk on that in a few slides as well. Um, for, for day trippers, people who are living in your region, um, they're gonna be researching things with near me tagged on the end of it. Um, so best brunch near me or um, day walks near me, outdoor activities near me, that kind of thing. Um, you can create um, Google Ads campaigns based on that um, near me focus to kind of make the most of these um, local regional searches. Um, without a doubt as well, RTOs are going to go head to head um, marketing um, the region kind of against each other, um, while our generic media is also doing their bit right now. So all of these messages will be consumed by that um, domestic trimmer. I'm really loving stuff. Uh, back Your Backyard campaign at the moment. It's um, really bright and interesting and a really cool way to promote um, parts of New Zealand that people haven't, may have not thought thought of before to visit. Um, domestics will also check reviews and ratings um, to make sure they're getting really, really good bang for buck before purchasing anything. Um, so right now is a great time to ensure you've answered or replied to any reviews um, that were made to, before lockdown. So that's reviews of TripAdvisor, Google My Business, um, Facebook, the, the whole shooting box. It's a good time just to kind of do a bit of a spring clean on those, on those review sites. Um, Cool, so let's talk about your digital domestic toolbox. So um, kind of put this in the context of the domestic traveler, um, not so much international traveler whatsoever. Um, I, I do believe that digital is the absolute best way to reach the domestic traveler. Um, there, there is no other kind of platform or option that gives us the, the targeting or the transparency of ROI that um, digital does as a whole. Um, through, you know, through digital ads, you can target um, people who are craft beer lovers within 200 k's of your, um, your brewery, or um, you could target um, high income um, older couples from Wellington who um, usually go overseas um, every year. So the, the granularity of targeting that digital offers us is is really awesome. Um, you can also tell how many bookings um, you get for, for your marketing spend within various campaigns as long as you're tracking the setup. 
correctly. Um, so you know exactly what's working and exactly what's not, and you're getting kind of as much bang for your buck as you can right now, which is really important um, within, within this context. Um, so the first kind of um, tool in your, in, in your arsenal is, is going to be your website, and it's probably the most important, um, the important part of your toolbox as well. Um, if before um, all of this hit us, you were focusing on an international audience or you were balancing internationals with domestics, um, you may need to change the wording of a lot of your content to speak more to the domestic traveller, to that, to that local kind of North Island domestic traveller. Um, think about whether your images and videos are suitable for a domestic audience. Um, are they going to appeal to, to a budget conscious family or are, are they more kind of um, higher end, uh, silver surfer, if not international? Um, which kind of audience are you targeting domestically with those, um, with those visuals? Um, how do you address the concerns of the, the cautious traveller right now? Um, I'd suggest this is done um, on your homepage, but it should definitely be something that you address before going into any kind of promotional work in level two. Um, from a tech perspective, um, make sure your website loads really quickly. Um, make sure it's optimized in the back end to um, index strongly in Google, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, in terms of paid media as well, um, this is an absolute key way to, to reach out with and connect with new domestic audiences. So we would recommend a, a real mix of platforms. Um, usually you, you'll see the best bang for your buck from um, Google Display, Google Search, um, Facebook and YouTube. So you can kind of create demand for your offering um, to specific audiences via uh, Facebook display advertising or um, Google display advertising, which is really graphic ads that you place um, in front of key audience segments that um, Google gives you based on cookie data. Um, and short YouTube bumper clips are great as well. So we're seeing kind of six second um, YouTube ads offer really good bang for buck in that awareness space. Um, and then once people have come through to your website, um, you can retarget them again um, using something called retargeting, which can be run through either Facebook or Google. Um, so retargeting is when someone's come to your website, had a look around, hasn't converted or hasn't submitted an inquiry, and leaves, and then your ads can um, show to them for the next kind of week or two until they convert or until they until that time period is up. And it serves to help keep your offering top of mind for people as they continue to, to go through with their travel researching. Um, I'll talk a bit more about um, strategy around these platforms in a moment too. Um, Google visibility and SEO um, is a really important way to get bang for your buck from a digital presence. If your website is showing for a number of key phrases um, that relate to your offering, be it accommodation, um, family activities, luxury dining, um, guided walks, anything like that, um, you're going to see more traffic that doesn't cost you anything than the websites that aren't indexing for those relevant phrases. Um, if you're not sure how well optimized your site is, undertaking an SEO audit is a great place to start. Um, so I'll just put a free one into chats after this um, and just remind me, I'll pop it in there and you guys can undertake a, a free audit yourself by running your website um, through, through this piece of software. Cool, so um, bottom line now, EDM stands for um, Electronic D Direct Marketing. Um, and essentially this is all about communicating to your previous guest database using um, email newsletters that, that really add value. Um, your previous guest domestic data um, has never been more important than it is right now. Um, these guys are absolute gold. They've already experienced and hopefully enjoyed your product. Um, they're familiar with your brand um, and they're likely to be keen to support New Zealand companies more than ever right now. So, Creating an EDM strategy where you're communicating with them regularly um, and including things like purchasing gift vouchers for a special occasion, um, referring a friend with a discount code, or including a button that links to a recent blog post they might be interested in um, is a great way to kind of turn these guys into, into your brand ambassadors going forward. 
Um, social media, so I'm referring to this in an organic sense rather than a, in a paid media sense, um, is a great way to maintain and build your brand awareness and just in general, just not go dark. Um, remember to read the room in terms of um, the mood of your posts um, and try to ensure that you're posting content um, that really adds to people's lives rather than um, just becomes kind of noise in their news feed. Um, so things like showing um, empathy right now is really important um, and being um, really down to earth and really human in the way you're approaching the social posts um, is kind of key, key content tips to, to think about at the moment. Um, and lastly, think of your RTO, think of CEDA as part of your domestic digital toolbox as well. Um, does your website listing on their, on their site look as good as it possibly can? Um, what kinds of domestic campaigns are they looking at running to target the domestic audience to get more domestics to the Manawatu region? Um, and how can you leverage this within your own digital comms? Um, the more you can complement it within your own marketing work, um, the more you're going to um, make the most of it essentially to get, get those visitors to, to choose you after they've chosen the region itself. So um, let's move into a little bit of digital strategy work. So um, matching your uh, toolbox to the level, so to speak. Um, so uh, I think these levels are, are a great way to um, manage and base digital strategy on right now, especially because we're only targeting a domestic audience. Um, they're helping um, tell us what kind of travel is safe, um, and also it helps us to, um, to figure out how to read the room when we're talking to how other Kiwis are feeling right now. Um, I'm a glass half full kind of girl, so I'm going to um, totally ignore level four um, in the hope that we'll never have to, to go back there um, in lockdown anytime soon. So let's kick off with, um, with level three, which we're in right now, which is um, kind of uh, far more relevant, I believe. So we're only a few days into um, level three, and people are clearly feeling a little bit brighter than they were um, Last week, we're, we're still very much keeping to our bubbles, um, but people are beginning to plan and put their feelers out for holidays, which is really cool. Um, I don't know if you've heard about Yonder. Um, so they're an automated tourism chatbot company based in Taranaki. Um, they, they collect um, chatbot data across all their um, tourism clients across, across the country. And this week, um, James just told me they're seeing a 50% um, increase in terms of chat interest in activities and attractions um, since last week, which got me really excited because that was kind of um, the first indicator of, of people um, reaching out to connect with tourism businesses in the activity sector um, across their whole of New Zealand client base. Um, which, is, which is quite a cool indication of um, the mood of the nation, so to speak. So let's talk about digital strategy for um, level three. And um, that's going to look like these covering these five key bases. Um, so on your website, before the end of level three, make sure you've updated your messaging to um, focus and support your uh, proposition to the domestic traveller. Um, make sure you've got plenty of content on there that supports the cautious traveller and gets those guys over the line. So cancellation policy, really clear health and safety comms. Um, from a paid media standpoint, we, we don't believe that um, you should have um, any or, or very much at all paid media in market right now. Um, but we would recommend that you create a bit of a um, level one slash level two um, campaign strategy. So what types of um, offerings are you going to look to get out there to day trippers in level two? What, what kind of offer, offerings are you going to look to get out there um, to more general domestic travellers in level one? How are you going to get these guys over the line? Um, and what types of platforms do you think fit best with your, um, with your proposition? You can ask them more about this in the questions if you'd like as well. Um, if you're really keen, you could load your campaigns ready for level two. Um, I'd recommend starting these as soon as we have um, indication that level two is starting, because that's when we'll start to start to research, maybe not necessarily book, but definitely start to actively research what those day trips are going to look like. Um, think about a, a Mother's Day competition um, or promoting gift vouchers right now. Um, Mother's Day is not this weekend, but the weekend after. Um, so it's a really cool way to maybe um, promote um, 
you know, buying a voucher for mum and, and the kids or um, launching a, a Mother's Day competition with a couple of other operators, you know, the ultimate mum's day out in Manawatu or that kind of thing could be quite a cool move right now. Um, in terms of that um, email marketing space, if you haven't got one already, um, create a bit of a plan for your database um, and tie in your paid media campaign strategy with this plan. So if you're planning to, um, to push out a, a really convincing school holiday offer um, for the July school holidays, um, make sure that you're um, working that into the paid media you've got running around the school holidays and, and your email marketing as well. So they should both be in tandem. Um, in terms of consistency, don't um, overload your previous guest database with, with emails. So I tend to think one or two a month is absolute um, maximum and go for quality over quantity um, and that's how you'll, um, you'll avoid too many unsubscribes and you'll maintain the integrity of that list so to speak. Um, in the SEO space, before the end of level three, um, put your website through through that free free audit. Okay, you've got nothing to lose, um, and that audit will throw up um, any issues that your site has got in terms of best practice Google visibility. Um, it might flag a few things that you need to work through with your developer. Um, as long as they're not charging you too much, that is a really good use of your money right now. Um, indexing well on Google is um, is awesome. Then for buck in the long term, so don't kind of shy away from that. Um, and then in your, with your social media for the next two weeks, I'd focus on a bit of a mix of dreaming and planning content. So dreaming content kind of high level um, might be more focused on landscapes, more focused on um, who your team is, maybe a did you know series, um, that kind of thing, but mixing it in with planning content. So uh, mixing it in with um, maybe a little bit of UGC, so user-generated content, some beautiful guest photos from summer pre-pandemic, pre um, and just resharing that kind of thing to get people kind of thinking about putting themselves in the shoes of, of guests who have already traveled with you or already stayed with you. Um, so let's move to level two, which hopefully is not too far away. Um, this is when life is going to become a little bit more normal, um, even though uh, interregional travel is still going to be discouraged. Um, domestic audiences and the guys in the region are going to be hanging out for day trips, um, catching up with friends, a change of scenery, um, and they're also going to be very actively researching and planning for travel um, once we get to level one probably not locking anything in at that level two, um, that level two stage. So your level two digital strategy should, um, again, your website supporting the cautious traveler um, and inspiring day trippers within your region should be kind of the key focus of it for that, um, for that level two um, time. Um, your paid media, you should launch um, all of your level two day tripper campaigns as soon as we move into this space to start nurturing people through that awareness, engage, convert process to book. Um, with your paid media as well, try and aim for a um, return on investment of one to 10. Um, so, so make sure that all of your tracking is set up um, as well as possible. You know, if you don't know how to set up your tracking, um, you know, reach out to a specialist to do this because it, it makes sure that um, every dollar you spend on marketing um, is, is traced as to whether it resulted in a booking or not. Um, and that, that's when digital really comes into its own is that transparency of, of ROI. Um, so you really want to be aiming for that one to 10 um, ROI at minimum with whatever you put out there in the market. Um, your EDMs, you should be um, pushing into your um, email marketing plan to, to previous guests. Um, and also thinking about creating a custom audience in Facebook using um, your guest data. So this is a lot easier than it sounds. Um, if you've got a, a really good previous guest database in, in MailChimp or in your email marketing platform, um, pull that out as an Excel doc and then load that into Facebook as a custom audience. Just means that any type of comms um, you're sending previous guests within your email marketing, you can then um, kind of piggyback off those comms with, a, with the advertising campaign to that same audience in Facebook. 
So basically they're seeing the same message across two different platforms, giving it a lot more cut through um, and a lot more kind of impact than if it's just on one platform. Um, custom audiences aren't that hard to create in Facebook um, using, using your previous guest data. Um, in that SEO space, continue to work through um, the outcomes of that SEO audit um, and also get a little bit familiar with Google Analytics and monitor any increases in organic traffic that you're seeing um, over the month or so that you've been working on SEO work. If you're doing it well, um, you should see pr a pretty cool impact on um, how much organic traffic you're seeing and that will happen over the kind of the first one to one to three months of going through the work, which is really cool. Um, and that social space, focus mostly on, on planning content. So kind of lose the really high level dreamy stuff and try and get people to take action. So that's running competitions, um, that's um, pushing more user content, um, maybe that's challenging people to come and enjoy your activity. Uh, we work with a, um, a company called Velocity Valley in Rotorua and um, they have something called a, a Schweeb, which is like a um, pedal powered monorail. Um, and Velocity has been challenging their fan base to come and race their mates and race their parents and race their families on the Schweeb as soon as they're open again. Um, they've been getting some really cool engagement, um, people tagging in their mum, tagging in their dad, you know, I'm going to beat you, you better be training now, that kind of stuff. So think about how you can engage people in your offering um, within your social media once we get to level two. It's a cool way to get them kind of um, communicating with you and your offering once we're there. So, um, level one um, would be, which is really exciting. Um, life will feel like a lot like it used to at level one. Um, and while I believe domestic travelers will be a lot more cautious than usual, um, there's a strong chance they'll be chomping at the bit to get outside their region. Um, with that said, health and safety and cancellation policies will play a really big part um, in their path to purchase, even if this is three months down the track. Um, so, so do make sure you're catering to that cautious traveller, um, even when we're in level one, even kind of once we get to Christmas and, and beyond. Um, it, it'll just be a, a really big part of getting more people over the line, I believe. Your strategy should be um, semi back to usual, um, but with the addition of targeting um, those cautious travellers. So um, launch all of your level one campaign work. Um, think about focusing on those top five source markets. So um, those top five uh, Manawatu domestic um, visitor markets are kind of, they're already engaged with you. So focus on them first. Um, keep on aiming for a one to 10 uh, ROI with all your paid media work. Stay consistent with your email marketing um, and also have a think about how you can turn them into brand ambassadors. So I always love the idea of um, referring a friend and your friend will get 30 or 40% off um, because you're a guest yourself um, or maybe asking them to post, um, post old photos of them traveling with you on, on your social media pages, offering them an incentive to do so, um, that kind of thing because Previous guests who have had a great time with you, they're gold and um, they're the ones that will um, talk to their friends and tell their families about the time they had to try and try and push that word of mouth a wee bit more. Um, your SEO work should be in full force by now, so make sure you're monitoring organic traffic performance in Google Analytics. Um, and all of your social media should be focused on supporting to get people over the line to book. So perhaps you're promoting um, packages, you're running with other operators, you're promoting competitions, um, maybe you've got a um, referring friends and family um, deal going on, that kind of stuff. So all of your social work should, should focus on getting people over the line to, to book and to come back to travel with you, essentially. Let's just have a quick look at some uh, paid media examples. Um, this is from a paid media um, client based out of Cromwell in the South Island. So this is Highlands Motorsport Park. Um, the first one on our left here is a Google display ad. Um, so as you can see, these ads are really visual um, and they serve to kind of plant the seed or create the demand for an offering. Um, 
a Google display ad is often the very first place that someone might see your brand if they've ever come across it before. Um, and, and within Google's uh, tracking network, we're able to make them really, really targeted. So um, for these guys, we're targeting people who are um, very much into motorsport, have disposable income, are between a certain age range, um, and are within two hours of their location in Cromwell initially for, for that level two piece. So as you can see, the ads are a pretty eye-catching, um, really graphic, and it is that first touch to say, oh, hey, this, this looks awesome. Why have I not thought about it before for a click through um, to their website? So the next ad here is a um, Google search ad, previously Google AdWords. Um, this is all about getting in front of a user who has intent, okay? So if somebody searches go-karting Queenstown, um, this type of ad would come up in an effort to show them that um, Highlands is an awesome option for go-karting in that Queenstown region. Um, these ads are kind of mid-funnel and serve to play in that engagement space. Um, people are likely probably not going to book from, an, from a Google search ad, but they are likely to kind of um, look through your offering and, and start to actively consider purchasing with you. Um, where we get the bulk of our conversions is from our Facebook retargeting ads. So um, these ads are shown to people who have um, been to the Highland site before, um, but they haven't converted or they haven't submitted an inquiry, um, which means that they'll see uh, this Facebook retargeting ad um, for about two weeks after they've been to the site, because we believe two weeks is a good amount of time to a, not piss people off, <laughs> but B, um, stay top of mind um, and, and keep that kind of brand awareness, um, you know, brand kind of um, top of mind space, space going. Um, it's worth saying that as well that um, retargeting ads are really, really good bang for buck. They're incredibly cheap. Um, and we see an awesome conversion rate from, um, from retargeting ads. It's basically the, the last thing that really gets people over the line. Um, to, to book because you're, you're staying in their face as they're going through that travel planning process. Cool, so I'm just gonna jump into um, a quick digital checklist which you'll be able to um, take away because we'll make the slides available for download after this. Um, this checklist will help you get digitally ready for the domestic traveler um, as we move down through the levels. So um, seven, things, seven things to think about or, or do on it, um, which is kind of gives you a good, a good focus for the next few weeks. Um, so number one, add content to your website that addresses the cautious traveler. So easy bound cancellation policies and um, being really clear on your current health and safety processes. Uh, number two, create a, um, a paid media campaign plan. So create the campaigns that you're wanting to push to domestics um, who are day trippers in level two and who are your general domestic drive and fire zone in level one. So those top five audiences we talked about earlier. Um, it's really good to have um, a like an idea of the campaigns you're wanting to run kind of for the next three months or so. And then as soon as we hit the level that corresponds with that campaign, you can push them live. Um, so think about that mix of YouTube, Google, and Facebook um, to try and nurture people through that decision-making process. Um, number three is um, pop your website through that uh, SEO audit platform, which I'll share in a second, um, and work through any technological changes um, required as your developer. Um, this is kind of a, a long-term um, focus, but it's a really good time to do that right now. Um, the next one is to brainstorm how you can make um, previous domestic guests uh, brand ambassadors. So um, how can you get them talking about you, recommending you to friends and family, um, all, all that kind of stuff. So turn them into people who, who are kind of your, your human billboards, so to speak. Um, the next is teaming up with um, other operators to launch a giveaway during level two. So um, promoting the ultimate family day out in Palmerston North or the ultimate um, Mother of Two Mother's Day weekend, um, that kind of stuff. Remember that um, with all of the entries that you gather as well, um, if you're doing that on your website and taking uh, emails as part of the um, competition submission, you can then use those emails um, for future EDMs as well to that particular audience. So if they enter the Ultimate Family Day out in Palmerston North, you'll know that they're likely to be a family, so they'll be interested in any kind of family offerings you've got going in the future as well. So there's a, a really cool kind of um, double value add there 
for you in terms of awareness and then using that data for the future. Uh, the next is to show your support for other businesses. So um, don't be afraid to share and feature um, other offerings who complement yours in the region. So your favorite cafe or um, you know, a, a really beautiful um, guided day walk or all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in the hope that they'll do the same for you. So we're kind of stronger together because no traveler will come to a region to just do one thing, to just go to one restaurant or just stay in one, um, you know, just stay in their accommodation and then leave. They're going to do lots of other things at the same time. Um, and the last one is to remember to uh, adjust your social media comms based on reading the room as we move down through the levels. So just be really dynamic with the content that you're choosing to, to push out there um, and just kind of keep your finger on the pulse with how it's being received um, within your fan base as well. Awesome. So really quickly before we get into um, questions, I just wanted to um, mention that um, right now we're giving away a tourism website to um, one lucky New Zealand um, operator. So it's a, it's a really easy um, form that you fill in and submit if you'd like to go into the drawer for this, but um, a, a really beautiful tourism website will, will help you to kind of stand um, head and shoulders above above other domestic offerings, which is um, kind of why we're doing this for the industry. So jump onto that link if, if this suits you um, and enter. We'd, we'd love to see a lot of um, one of our three operators um, in the draw for that as well. Cool. So um, that is me. I'll just stop sharing my screen and let's go into um, a bit of a um, chat, Ange, if that suits you. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for that, Alex. That was um, fantastic. Um, a lot of information to take in, I know, for everybody, but um, good to see lots of heads down, scribbling away, writing down notes. Um, my takeout from this was reading the room, obviously really important, um, and understanding how you talk at each different level. Um, the digital toolbox is an interesting one as well, and just remembering when, what to pull when you need it. Um, and, and um, I suppose this is a good opportunity to everyone, if you want to unmute, if anyone wants to, or they can write in the chat box about if there's anything you want to discuss now with Alex in the next wee while. Don't need each other's. <laughs> That's a good one. It's going to be a real hard one. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, just making sure that every region is promoted differently. Um, domestic travellers are, are going to take a lot of trips, I believe, especially, you know, cheaper weekends away and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, it will be an element of competition for sure. <laughs> um, but even banding together, kind of all, all regions together, um, you know, re related um, ones around you will help as well because, you know, if I'm taking five days in the lower North Island, I might not just stay in, in Manawatu, I might go to other areas as well. Mm. It's a tricky one. <laughs> and, and I think also initially people will support their backyard first. They'll, they'll stay okay. local and then they will branch out a little bit and then the RTOs will benefit on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally, totally. That, that Kiwi, um, yeah, backing New Zealand is, is going to be really, really strong once we come out of this. Yeah, the new normal. Yeah, yeah. I'll just pop that, um, that free SEO audit tool into chat as well, guys, before I um, forget. There you go. No, I, th I think um, with that question about level two, I think we're all just dreaming at the moment, hoping and... and Fingers crossed that um, mid-May uh, there'll be an announcement that level two kicks in. I mean, there's lots of rumours out there that level two may hit sort of mid to late May and we could be in it till September. That's one rumour I've been hearing lately through a good source. So, yep. yeah, yeah, I know. Really. Yeah, and there's no, there's no, um, nothing's published yet on exactly what it looks like. We're, we're kind of going off what level two was before level four hit. Um, which was no encouragement of inter-regional travel um, and all, all businesses open again um, with one metre social distancing. So um, obviously our campaigns and angles need to be refined once, once that is confirmed. Um, but, but there will be tourism opportunity in Level 2, I believe, for sure. 
I think another absolute key um, piece from your talk, Alex, was around health and safety and also the cancellation policies and that cautious traveller who's going to be coming out of their bubble and being a little bit um, gun shy as to what they do and, and who's doing it right, I suppose, and how you then communicate that across your different platforms. Yeah, yeah, totally. And not, not being scared, I think, to um, recognise that, yeah, there's a global pandemic out there right now and um, we're doing everything we can to kind of make you feel at ease travelling and coming to visit us. Um, I had some clients who are a bit scared to be really overt with their health and safety policies right now. And, I, you know, I think the, the clearer um, and the more kind of forthright you can be with it, um, the better. You know, it's not, um, it's not all warm fuzzies. It, this is reality and showing people you know what cancellations will look like and showing them how you're keeping them safe right now is going to be key to trying to get them to book mm. and having some flexibility there too yeah. yeah 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 totally totally does anybody else have any more questions um just just um the next one that alex is going to be running um what we want to do is Let's get a little bit of a sense check from all of you today um, with regards to the digital toolbox and just if there's any particular areas that you want Alex to focus on in the next um, webinar that we run in a few weeks time. Um, whether you want to put that in the chat today or whether you want to come back to Rebecca at CEDAR. Um, but we really wanted to, to keep the next session a little bit open um, and get some feedback from you based on today's session as to what areas you want to focus on for um, for the next one. Has anyone got any SEO for my operators? Yep, cool. Yep, that seems to be one that's popped up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be a scary as it we, sounds a bit. Yeah. Are lots of people keen on something like that? Thumbs up maybe? No? Yeah. <laughs> I see three, I see three. <laughs> Kylie, yeah, is recorded. Yeah, 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 it is. I see you jumped in a bit late, yeah. <laughs> I can send um, Angel and um, Kelly, I'll send you guys the slides as well, so they can grab the slides after this. Yeah. Uh, I know some were probably over-detailed for slides, but there's just um, there's a lot to talk about in this space. <laughs> I think the other one that's always a bit of a challenge is working out, um, I mean, I know everyone's on limited budgets at the moment in terms of marketing, with the paid media, what's the best one, the best cut through? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, Facebook is awesome bang for buck, whether you're um, running kind of first touch display ads or retargeting. Um, and Google ads are also awesome bang for buck, um, especially at the moment, there's just barely anybody um, advertising, which will obviously change. But um, I probably say, yeah, Google ads, Facebook display and Facebook retargeting for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the Facebook retargeting one's an interesting one. I know some people have um, asked a few questions in the past about that and how that works. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And once retargeting's set up, it's so easy to run. You know, like it's um, it's really really cheap. Like the, the bulk of our clients kind of maybe put one fifty to three hundred bucks into it a month, um, and they they absolutely see that one to ten ROI or even better from that investment. Yeah. And this was this was pre COVID, so. Um, you know, it's all kind of a bit of a guessing game right now, but um, just in, in terms of bang for buck, the retargeting is brilliant. Fantastic. All right, any other questions here? I'm just conscious it's one minute to 12 and everyone's got lots of busy um, plans ahead of them for the day. <laughs> lunch, lunch. <laughs> lunch, maybe. <laughs> Escaping for that bit of exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try and do a lunch walk to kind of reset my brain to get back into afternoon, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know, At least the sun's shining a little bit. That's a good thing. Um, yeah. So unless anyone's got any other questions, um, thank you all for, for logging in. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to do a finishing remark or? Yeah, just uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, this is our first session, so we do have a few more coming up. Um, so Alex is back, as Angela said. Um, in a few weeks time so if you've registered for this session and haven't registered for that and um, just check out the team link and you'll be able to sign up and then we're back on the 12th of may with qualmark and um, so we've got greg anderson who's the gm of qualmark and he's just going to be taking us through what what is qualmark what's it all about and how has it changed from what people maybe think um, it has been previously so yeah just just answering those questions that people might have 
um, around if it's um, something that they want to do for their business. So yeah, so again, thanks for coming along. I think we've got lots from Alex's talk to go away and to mull over and to check out, especially that digital checklist. That's really helpful. Um, and yeah, it'd be great if you've got any more questions around what we want to cover next time, just send them through you to me and you should have my email address. So thanks everybody and we'll see you at the next session.